dawn arrives. Stars are swept away, and night cycles into morning as it has since the very beginning. In the magic hour's fleeting blue glow, the torch is passed and the day shift begins. Flurries of activity set a lively tone. This transition between nocturnal and diurnal creatures is unique. It's a time full of beauty and surprises in the animal kingdom. The living world awakens and welcomes the glory of a new day. Savannah, wide expanses of arid plains that seem to go on forever. Grassland ecosystems are found in Australia, South America, and here in Africa at Zambia's South Luangwa Reserve. Marked by long dry seasons resulting in sparse vegetation, this region is home to a fascinating array of life that is revealed at dawn. The dry season brings fierce competition for resources. Every river and watering hole is a sanctuary, teeming with life, as well as danger. During the transition between the coolness of night and the day's relentless heat, nocturnal and diurnal species cross paths, intermingling. Wetlands become a stage for the drama of survival. Beyond rivers and lagoons, vegetation fades. The savanna is parched, but exceptional plants still thrive. Like this tree, the Kegelia africana, commonly called the sausage tree for the long sausage-like fruits it bears. It blooms out of season, serving as a vital source of food during the long months of drought. It offers tender greens to chew and a bit of shade. This tree's annual blooming begins and ends during a single night. Flowers blossom, soon falling to the ground. Within hours, they're completely gone. During the day, the hippos take refuge where the river is deepest, submerging completely. They stay cool and wait for evening. In direct sun, their thin skin would burn and crack, inviting potentially deadly infections. Once the sun has begun to fade, the hippos stir, rousting themselves. Danger of sunburn has passed. It's time to start the second part of the day. Each of them sets out alone, 
taking a nocturnal stroll in search of food. An adult can travel more than 20 kilometers in a single night just to find the 40 kilos of plants it needs to survive. Finding sausage fruits is fortuitous for the hungry beast. The fruits weigh more than four kilos apiece. The hippo's powerful jaws make it one of the only herbivores capable of breaking the fruit's nearly impenetrable shell. But the sausage tree also benefits. Throughout the night, the hippo will transport the seeds in its belly, spreading them little by little across the savanna. sausage tree has other nocturnal co-conspirators. As the succulent red flower blooms, it releases a strong fragrance of decaying fruit. Fruit bats and insects gather in hordes, attracted by the noxious odor. Stores of pollen are collected and carried away with them as they pollinate other trees throughout the night. Far from the sausage tree stands a two-meter work of art, home to a colony of termites. Their grand citadels are actually made from old vegetation and other animals' waste materials. These tiny creatures recycle up to 80% of the savanna's refuse. Featuring complex inner architecture, this man boasts galleries and chambers even ventilation systems with functional chimneys. When night fades, the small, nearly translucent architects get to work. They dig, move materials and build their castle, tirelessly toiling to preserve the colony. Maintenance is a perpetual job. Moonlight gives way to a glimmer on the horizon. And the night sky surrenders to blue. A guttural roar breaks the calm. The southern ground hornbill issues an eerie wake-up call. The wattles of the hornbill's magnificent red throat pouch inflate, producing a lion-like sound, which can be heard kilometers away. Southern ground hornbills live in small groups on the ground. It strolls nonchalantly as it hunts, but can run at high speeds. The hornbill travels daily distances up to 100 square kilometers, foraging for grasshoppers, termites, scorpions, toads, and eggs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Woken by the hornbill's cry, yellow baboons amble down from the trees where they sleep high above. They sit out in search of breakfast. A lookout raises an alarm. A predator has been sighted. Pukus relay the signal. This warning ripples through the air, quickly passing from species to species. The intruder's cover is blown. This leopard will have to try his luck elsewhere. The yellow baboon is one of the rare primates to spend more time on land than in the trees. On the ground, constant vigilance is essential. never risk traveling alone. They remain within earshot of the group, constantly exchanging vocalizations to keep tabs on one another. Other animals appear, tending to their morning rituals and greeting a new day. Dawn progresses. And nocturnal animals prepare for sleep. Like this elephant shrew, who makes a well-protected home in the dense underbrush. Before settling down for some shut-eye, the shrew performs a clever ritual. By clearing away debris, it constructs a series of complex pathways. This maze ensures an obstacle-free escape route should he need it. In case of danger, the elephant shrew will flit noiselessly from circle to circle, racing to safety. This improves their chance of surviving an attack, or neighbors who become a little too nosy. To the west, opposite the rising sun, the sky is still dark. Everything is tranquil. The lagoons and marshes are calm. Most animals instinctively steer clear of predator-infested watering holes at night. But soon enough, the sun will rise and intensifying heat will force them to water. Waterfowl are the first to return. Pelicans, marabou, gulls and egrets leave their sleeping perches, flocking to the water's edges. A winged vanguard assembles. They know the heat will soon cause the water level to recede enough for fish to be trapped in the shallows.
hundreds of birds stand motionless. It's only a matter of time. With patience and a little luck, catching their food will be a cinch. creatures descends upon the water, foraging for food en masse. The torches passed from nocturnal to diurnal species. Honey badgers trot home after a night hunting. These fearless ratels are some of the most ferocious mammals in Africa, even attacking animals much larger than themselves such as antelopes. returns to the burrow with her offspring, ready to bed down, just as diurnal animals awaken and set out for the day. It's also time for the red ants to make their shelter. They stream in uniform columns of thousands, each leaving behind an invisible pheromone trail. There are several forces behind this expedition, and woe to any who get in their way. Red ants take advantage of dawn to move their colony. The humid air is favorable for implementing the heat-sensitive chemical mapping techniques that keep them on course. During migration, ants are extremely vulnerable. Even with soldiers to guard them, all the community's individuals are at risk. An alert ant lion stands guard, flinging sand on any unfortunate insect that happens to come too close. The objective is to capture them in a deadly sand trap. The hapless victim tries to claw its way out, but all is lost. The ant lion continues the assault until it's buried and finally devoured. By plotting the same courses night after night, hippos act as the savannah's massive civil engineers. These highways span kilometers and are used by other animals as well. After a night of solitary foraging, Hippos return to their pods. Males roar, drowning out the other morning sounds. True tenors of the savannah. Their bellows could be heard kilometers away and underwater.
one after the other, each hippo returns, taking their position within the pod's order. Adult males display an immense gaping yawn to re-establish chain of command. This gesture is a symbol of aggression, a mark of high rank, and a challenge that demands submission and respect. Guinea fowl await the hippos, since their arrival will attract their favorite food. Insects rapidly colonize a hippopotamus dung. Thus, one animal's mess becomes the guinea fowl's treasure. This buggy breakfast of beetles, flies, and larvae is not to be missed. since the first streaks of dawn. Sunbeams now warm the horizon. Shadows lengthen and colors grow vivid. Now it's the oxpecker's turn to benefit from the hippopotamus. These passerines eat parasites hosted on the bodies of large mammals. Pecking at their wounds, the bird removes dead skin and larval infestations. It's a perfect example of mutualism. One animal gets a free meal, and in exchange, the other receives a grooming session. a bold entry. To impress a rival, he yawns belligerently. A foolhardy approach. Dominant male meets him with a swift reprimand. Rivaling hippos compete in violent, at times deadly, duels. Their blade-like canines can inflict fatal wounds. is not seriously wounded, but he is shunned from the pod. The dominant male conveys his superiority, flinging excrement with rapid flicks of his tail. It's a customary gesture of a hippo reinstating territorial claim. <laughs> The ousted youngster now faces a solitary exodus. If he doesn't want to perish in the sun's unforgiving glare, he'll have to find another water source quickly. As the dry season wears on, there is less food to go around. Shrinking watering holes decrease personal space, which only makes confrontations more common. The drought is intense. 
hippopotamus mortality peaks during this time of year. Much to the pleasure of the river's alpha predators, the Nile crocodiles, casually alternating between gaping in the sun and dipping in the water, they wait for passers-by, always ready to eat. They aren't picky. A drifting carcass fits the bill just fine. The crocodile's feasting is a macabre spectacle. And if a crocodile happens to break a tooth during one of these ferocious gluts, it matters little. The tooth will grow back as many as 50 or more times. Finally, the exiled hippo has some luck. But the part of the river he has chosen is far from calm. This shore's escarpment is home to a colony of crimson birds. Hundreds, if not thousands of southern carmine bee-eaters fill the air, pursuing bees, wasps, and hornets. They eat their prey, stingers and all. It's breeding season for the carmines. Once they have their fill of sunbathing, the bee-eaters begin to dig out long tunnels in the dense sand. Most of these are one or two meters deep. Some have even reached seven meters. At the end of these tunnels, each couple builds a nest insulated with plants. The expectant parents take shifts throughout the day until the job is done. If a bird attempts to take possession of another couple's nest, they are ousted. sun's ascent, the sausage tree's flowers start to fall. One by one, a cascade of blood-red blooms litters the ground. This bounty is a blessing for many species. A gourmet breakfast is served. Lovebirds drink the nectar.
Impalas eat every petal, a most delectable treat. Banded mongooses devour the sweet Corollas. Black-faced vervets also join the feast. the highest branches. These monkeys carefully extract every drop of nectar and even help the fall of the remaining flowers. This phenomenon takes place in just one night, but the ecological role it plays is crucial, especially during this harsh time of year. Mopani bees must act fast. Competition here is fierce. They too must forage for vital pollen among the fallen flowers, hoping to get their fill before it's too late. For the trees where they situate their hives, the gnat-like Mopani bees have a clever method of accessing the hidden nest. A finger's length passageway is constructed from wax, and this serves as a sort of runway for takeoffs and landings. The bees come and go, hauling their precious pollen in through the funnel. But their non-stop ballet draws attention. A hungry assassin bug arrives, equipped with a resourceful hunting method. The much larger insect's legs are coated in sticky plant secretions. By simply walking among the Mopani bees, it collects several victims. The assassin bug then injects each with digestive juices, which serve to liquefy the bees' insides allowing them to be drained with the bug's straw-like proboscis. Immune to the bee's futile assaults, the plant bug leaves with her meal in hand. scorched plain, far from any river, an unexpected thatch of green suddenly brightens the seemingly endless shades of brown. This lush haven offers much needed reprieve for wildlife.
Landing in small groups, black crowned cranes crowd into feed. Every morning, they perform a dance, displaying attractive ornaments and elegant silhouettes in the muted glow. Black-crowned cranes live up to 40 years in the wild, typically pair bonding for life. Isolated bodies of water inevitably draw predators as well. During the previous night, lions killed a buffalo that came to drink. Anticipate the leftovers. Common eland antelope seldom drinks, thus improving its chance for survival. They avoid dangerous wet zones and stay hydrated by extracting water from plants eating during the humid morning hours. Guinea fowl must groom to stay free of parasites. A satisfying dirt bath accomplishes the task nicely. Familiar silhouettes emerge from clouds of dust. A small group of Bissa people cross the South Luangwa on the way to the village of Mfue where the market is located. As a basic precaution, 
They travel in groups after daybreak when predators are less of a threat. The beasts have traversed the 40 kilometers in a single day. And leave nothing behind but dusty tire tracks. The early hours are short-lived and busy in the bush. Humans and animals alike exploit the prime of day to conduct their business. In the morning, odors are carried further in the cooler air. A light breeze broadcasts these fragrances across the reserve, where kilometers away, an elephant herd has discerned the tempting aroma of figs. The herd will travel dozens of kilometers, beckoned by the promise of sweet fruit. Some yellow baboons have already spotted the tree. But the tree is heavy with figs, and they'll have to be shared. Ficus trees have staggered fruiting seasons, making it possible to find figs even in the midst of a drought. This tree is a key contributor to the savannah's food chain. Dawn washes over the fig tree, highlighting a fascinating example of co-evolution. This ficus is entirely dependent upon the fig wasp for pollination. Neither tree nor insect can exist without the other. The fig is no simple fruit. It's an enclosed inflorescence, sometimes called a synconium. Its womb-like inner composition is lined with thousands of tiny fig flowers. This complex receptacle awaits an all-female colony of wasps that arrive only at daybreak. Direct sun would damage their delicate wings. Only one of the wasps enters the fig, a difficult feat that requires the sacrifice of her wings. The fluid left behind seals the entry, and the wasp becomes captive. Going straight to the fig's heart, she fulfills her destiny, both by laying her eggs and by pollinating the flowers. With her mission complete, the wasp soon dies. is born anew. Another wasp generation emerges, well fed on fig pulp, ready to begin the cycle all over again. Fishing birds gather on the shore, soaking in the sun and growing in number. The waking hour has arrived, and for the moment, all is tranquil. 
the feathered hunters are waiting for the right moment to collect their morning provisions. is still not low enough for the birds to fish. Even with their eyes skimming the surface, their bills are just short of being able to catch breakfast. The birds will have to wait for nature to take its course before they can eat. An incoming herd of water buffalo is sure to hasten the process. Each of these animals drinks up to 20 liters of water per day. So a crowd this big will lower the water level. Time has arrived. En masse, the water birds descend, and the fish are easily corralled. Working together pays off. So various birds have gathered and they all join in, gulping down the catch of the day. Pelicans are heavy for their wingspans, and they take advantage of rising air currents, riding the updrafts high above. Gradually, the savannah succumbs to the heat. The increasingly sluggish animals wait for nightfall and the return of a new dawn. In the savanna, animals and plants participate in a complex dance of life and death. The light of day reveals a living celebration of adaptability. 
life's eternal cycle is renewed.